Today, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe InDesign and Photoshop as a power combo to create stunning animated GIFs for social media posts. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to create the storyboard in InDesign, export the pages as JPEGs, and then create frame animations in Photoshop. Finally, we'll share the animated GIF on LinkedIn. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, let's start things off in InDesign. And the first step is to create a new document. I'm gonna click on the new file button. That'll bring up my new document window. I'm gonna click on the web tab. And then in the width field, I'm going to make that 1080 pixels. And in the height field, 1080 pixels as well. And this is a square social media post size, typically for Instagram or even LinkedIn, which we'll share on that platform later on. The pages here will be 10. I know that seems like a lot, but we're gonna be creating a storyboard with different frames in these pages that we'll export to Photoshop um, also later in the, in the lesson. If you have facing pages checked, make sure that's unchecked, and then everything else is fine. You can go ahead and hit create. In my CC libraries, you can see that I have all the assets I need for this tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find them and follow along. Let's go to the pages panel and I'm gonna click the A parent. By the way, in the latest version of InDesign, um, A parent has replaced the master page. So they're not called master pages anymore. They're called parent pages. And so I'll click that and I'm gonna go to my CC libraries I'm gonna click on the rectangle frame tool and create a rectangle to cover the entire page. And I have a color here, this gray Pantone color. Now that's pretty dark for what I need. So I'm gonna to go to my swatches panel and make the tint of that 25%. Once you've done that, go back to your pages panel and click on page one to get out of the parent page. So this social media post is for a fictional men's clothing line and the idea is to place all the content on page one and lay it out in a way that you want the final GIF to look like. I'm gonna click on my CC libraries panel again, and I'm gonna start bringing in these clothing items one at a time. So let's go ahead and start with the, the blazer jacket, and I'm just gonna drop it into or onto the pasteboard, and then I'm just gonna place it in the upper right hand corner. By the way, if you want to scale things up or down, hold your shift command on Mac, and that would be shift control on Windows, and then scale inwards or outwards to decrease or increase the size. So something like that is fine. I'm gonna bring in these dress pants here and place them right about there. So basically for this, it's there's no real major structure to it. It's mainly supposed to be kind of like a collage looking social media post. Um, so I'm going to keep bringing these in here and there's real no order. Just see, try to put them in together like a puzzle and see how things fit while you're doing it. Actually, let's put this down here. I'll bring in this dress shirt here. Move that up here. Now that looks a little bit too big. So again, shift command, I'll scale that down. You want these shirts, these two down here, this one down below and this one, to be almost the same size. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in the first pair of shoes. Again, those are pretty big, so I'm gonna scale them down before dragging them onto the page. And I'll put those right about here. I'm gonna bring in the secondary pair of shoes. Again, scale them down a bit. You want the shoes to be somewhat close in size as well. That's pretty close. So let's bring those shoes down here. I'm gonna scale that down just a bit, that shirt. Let me move it down. There's another dress shirt here that I'm just going to paste right there on the pasteboard. Again, that's pretty big. So shift command, decrease the size. You can make it a little bit bigger. So basically you're just really eyeballing this. I have another pair of pants and that can go right under this dress shirt here. And sometimes it's good to be in preview mode so you can see the work without the text frame 
guides on, and that gives you a better sense on how to nudge things to the left, to the right, and so on. Now with this dress shirt up top, I'm just gonna rotate it maybe 12 degrees there. I'm gonna scale that up a bit and rotate this one minus 12 degrees or yeah, something like that. This shirt maybe, oh, we'll leave it straight like that. The pants are fine. The pants maybe a little bit bigger. That's a good size. And I have a couple watches here that I wanna bring in as well. So let's drop that one in. I gotta put my guides back on. So anyone that doesn't know to toggle between preview mode and then your, your work mode, um, just press anywhere on the pasteboard so you're not into anything and press W on your keyboard. That will toggle between um, both modes, view modes. So that's a pretty big size watch. I'm gonna scale it really, really down. You don't want it too big. So it's all about perspective with this too, right? The watch can't be as big as the pants. You want it to look as realistic as possible. Okay, so find nice little holes like that that you can use. I'm gonna move those pants maybe up a bit. Again, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go into preview mode here and start moving things around. Maybe move the watch a bit. These can go up. Let's bring in that secondary watch here. Scale that one down as well. And that can go maybe right here. Let's rotate that one a bit, maybe the other way, just so um, everything's not rotated the same way. So just use um, your judgment on which which way to rotate. Now I'm gonna move that up a bit. The idea here is to fill in some of the gaps, right? Make it look as realistic as possible. And this is a pretty minimalistic social media post. Um, you see a lot of these type of posts with major uh, clothing brands and whatnot. I also have a logo here, so I'm gonna click and place that and put it right in this top left hand corner and maybe put it somewhere like right here. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks. You can keep maneuvering and massaging things and making things look a little bit better to the eye. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think I have all the content that I need here. Pants, shirt, both shirts. Yeah, everything's there. So now what we're gonna do is start creating our storyboard with the other pages in this document. So going back to the pages panel, I'm gonna click on page two. Let me just zoom out a bit here. Page two, or this will be the starting point of the GIF. We want this to be blank. So when it opens, it will be blank and then all the content will start appearing two items at a time. And then the final frame will have each shoes kind of rotating back and forth, almost like they're, they're dancing. So what I want to have appear first is maybe this jacket and this shirt. So I'm gonna click on that one, hold my shift key, and then do command C, control C if you're on Windows. So let's leave the first page in the first page in the GIF, but the second page in this document. Let's leave that blank. Let's go to page three and shift option command V. Um, that would be shift control alt V on Windows. You can also go to edit, paste in place to paste it exactly in the same place as you grabbed it from. So again, we're building a storyboard here using InDesign and the first page will be blank. Page, the first ones that will, be, will appear are this jacket and this shirt. So let's keep moving along. Let's do th these pants here, hold shift, and then click this dress shirt on the right hand side, command C. Let's go to page four and paste that in. Go to the previous page and copy that and paste that in. While we're at it, let's go ahead and paste it on all the other pages as well, just so we don't have to keep doing this until we get to the bottom. Perfect, we have all of them in. And that's easier than going back a previous page and then copying those and bringing them in. Perfect, so there's page two. 
there's page four. So that's that's the first frame, the second frame, the third frame. Let's go back to our original frame. And so far we have the four clothing items. So let's grab maybe this dress shirt and a pair of black shoes. So blank, that's the first set, the second set, and we wanna paste that here. Let's paste it everywhere else as well. just to make it easier for us as we're working. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do it on every frame when you grab things. Perfect. And let's grab, so what do we have so far? Blank, first item, second item, third item. So let's now get pants and brown shoes, or no, let's do, let's do shoes and black watch. Okay. It's good to keep track by just going down and seeing the storyboard, right? So there's there's where we're at. And now here, let's put in that, okay? And then go ahead and paste it on everything else. And again, it's just, it's just good to kind of pay attention of what you're doing here, because the minute if you look off screen, you could get, could get a little confusing, but that's where we're at. Again, just to recap, blank, first set, second set, third set, fourth set, and then this last one here, let's grab the, the remaining items. So pants and brown uh, watch. So blank, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five, perfect. So this is how it's gonna look. The best way of doing it is click two, so you get a nice close shot of that blank page, and then Double click page two, double click page three, double click page four or page five, double click the next page, double click the next page. And then we have to keep pasting that one in. So let's finish that off and keep pasting the other ones in the last set. Perfect. So that should be all set now. And I'm going to go through it again. You can see. All I'm doing here is going through the pages and this is how our GIF will look. So if I go here, here, and then here, this last, um, this one here, page eight, is where we're gonna add the logo. So go ahead and grab that as a last step. Go back to page eight, paste that in, and then paste it in on the other pages as well. So really the GIF ends at page eight. Page nine and 10 are basically just to rotate each pair of shoes. Let's do, if you hold your shift key, it's easier. So let's do hold shift and rotate it to uh, negative or minus 45 degrees for that first one. And then hold your shift key and it's min or it's 45 degrees um, the opposite way. Okay, and now let's uh, go to this one here and leave it like so. And let's create one more page here. And here, let's go ahead and copy everything from the previous page, page 10. Shift, Option, Command, V. And let's rotate these the opposite direction. So hold your Shift key and rotate this one 45 degrees. Click on the black pair of shoes, hold your Shift key and rotate that 40, uh, negative or minus 45 degrees. So you have something like this, okay? I guess you didn't really have to duplicate that 10th page, but I'm just showing you in InDesign how that would look once we export it as a GIF. So before we export this, let's go through it one more time. Page two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Perfect, so that's how you would create a social media storyboard. Let's go ahead now and export these pages as JPEGs and then open them up in um, Photoshop to add the um, frame animation. To export the pages, go up to File, Export, and choose the destination or the folder that you want to save them to. So I'm gonna save it to this one here, JPEGs underscore two. 
And you can see they're going to save as social media underscore media underscore GIF. And that's fine. It's just the name of the document. In the format, you can save them as a JPEG or a PNG. I'm going to go with JPEG and click on save. In the export JPEG dialog box here, you can select a range, in which case that's what we want to do. We don't need that first page. So I'm going to do page 2 to 11. And we do want to export them as single pages. In the image quality, you want to choose maximum and the resolution for this because it's Instagram or sorry, any social media, just go ahead and 72 uh, PPI is just fine. Once you've done that, go ahead and click export and let that save out and then we can open them in Photoshop and I'll show you how to do that up next. All right, I'm in the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. We're gonna bring in those JPEGs that we just exported from InDesign. To do that, go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. That'll bring up the Load Layers window here. And basically all we're doing is loading each one of those images into its own layer that we can use to use the frame animation in InDesign. So I'm gonna click Browse and target the folder that I saved them to. And I'm just gonna select all of them and hit open. And you can see that they, they're all there in the load layers window. Once you're set, go ahead and click okay. You can see that the, the layers start loading in the layers panel there, one by one, they're all there. You may have to reorder them slightly. You can see that GIF 10 is coming in at number two. I like to keep them in the order that they should be. So I'm just gonna drag that one right to the bottom. And then I'm gonna turn everything off in the layers panel aside from that first blank frame that you see here. So that'll be the starting point. Remember, that'll be the starting point of the GIF. The bottom portion of my uh, workspace here is the timeline. So you'll need to open that and to, to open it or to access it, go up to window and timeline. Now I've shown you how to create a video timeline and you could certainly do that with these frames as well. But for this, I'm gonna show you how to create a frame animation using the pages that we've created from InDesign. Go ahead and click that and you can see it creates one frame automatically and that's the, the first blank frame. Now let's add a second frame to this timeline. Before we do that, I'm just gonna go to my panel options here and increase the panel size. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner, there's the first one. In the panel options again, click new frame and you could turn that second one on and turn that one off. So there's the first uh, clothing, the set that appears. So the jacket, the blazer and shirt, as well as the dress shirt below. Let's create another frame. So new frame and make it that third GIF frame here. So you can see we have two other pieces of clo clothing there. Create another frame. And basically you're turning that one off and turning the next one on. That's the easiest, easiest way of doing this. So create a new frame, uncheck and check. New frame. So it's a little repetitive, but once you get the hang of it, you can see it works out really nicely. New frame, turn that one off, turn the next one on. So we're at, we're at number seven now of the 10. Let's go ahead and create a new frame, uncheck and turn that one on. So now we're at the point where everything is in as well as um, as well as the logo. So let's see how this plays out. Before we go any further, I wanna click on the first frame, hold my shift key and click the last one to select all the frames in my timeline. And then where it says zero seconds, let's go ahead and make that 0 0.5. Now that changes them all, which is fine. And let's see how that looks at that speed. So you see that comes in a little quick. I'd like to slow it down, but I think one second is too slow. So I'm just gonna stop that. Let's click the first one, hold your shift key, click the last one, and then click that drop down again and select other. This allows you to set a custom time. So 0.5 is too fast. 
one second's a little too slow for what, what I want. So let's go 0.8 and click OK. Now that changes them all to 0.8. If I play that, I think that's a better pace than zero, half a second, and it's better than one second. So I'm gonna stop that, go to my eighth frame. Let's create a new frame here. Turn this one on, turn this one on. And let's do one more new frame. Turn that one off and this one on. So if I do this, we go there, there. So let's keep, what we can do here is um, we'll keep copying these so the shoes keep going. Okay, so we're at 10. So basically I wanna turn eight, nine, and 10 one more time to loop that a little bit longer. So new frame, turn 10 off, turn eight on. New frame, turn eight off, turn nine on. And one more frame here, turn nine off and then 10. And maybe let's end it with one more where the shoes are straight again. So let's uncheck 10 and turn nine back on. So let's play that and see how it looks from the top. I'm gonna click the first frame and hit play. You can see the clothing comes in at a nice pace. The shoes, the watches, the shoes start dancing a bit, which is nice. I see that I have one frame where it doesn't really, doesn't really, the shoes aren't as right there. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna delete this frame here. So we go here. Yeah, I'm gonna delete nine. And this is a good way of just going through and seeing if it all makes sense. So I don't want the shoes to be straight. I just want them to go back and forth. So eight, nine, 10, 11. Let's delete this one as well. And we can delete that last one as well. So basically I just want the shoes to go back and forth like so. One, two, one, two. So 11 frames in total. Let's add one more here. Make it an even 12. And let's make the shoes go back like so. So now that plays out nicely. And we can go ahead now and export this as a GIF. However, I wanted to show you one more thing before we do that. Let's say you didn't want this to be a GIF and you wanted to convert it into a video. You, you're still able to do that. In the bottom left-hand corner here, there's um, an icon that you can click, convert to video timeline. So if you click that, you can see everything in the timeline now turns into um, a video timeline and not a frame animation. So if there's a social media platform that doesn't support a GIF, um, then you could use this instead. And basically, to do that, you click your um, timeline panel options again and render the video. You'll click that. That'll bring up your render options. And basically, you could see here, the document size is 1080 by 1080, so it'll still be a square document, and you can select something like a YouTube HD 1080p at 30 uh, frames per second, and then you would render that out. I'm gonna hit Command-Z to go back to the frame animation, and I'll show you how to export that as a GIF, or save it as a GIF. Let's go to File, Export, save for web legacy. This will bring up the save for web window. In the preset here, we wanna select GIF 128 dithered. Make sure that you're working in the GIF preset. Everything else is fine up here. You can see down below that the image size is still 1080 by 1080. The looping options, we want this to loop forever or until social media um, stops the animation. Usually it'll play out a few times or oftentimes it may play forever. You can preview it here um, or just go ahead and click save. Again, this will save as a GIF file. I'm gonna save it in the same folder, JPEGs2, and let's just call this final JPEG for, um, let's just do final JPEG LinkedIn. 
Perfect. You can go ahead and hit save there. That'll save there. And now we can go ahead and share that and see how it looks on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great platform to add visual elements to your post, such as an animated GIF. Let's go ahead and add ours now. I'm gonna click on the add a photo icon and then choose the GIF that we just created and saved in Photoshop. Go ahead and click open. That'll create a little preview of the GIF. Just double check and see if everything's working properly. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and click done. And then just type in a little preview of what the post is all about. So follow along in my latest tutorial and learn how to create an animated GIF using a combination of InDesign and Photoshop. Once you're satisfied with the post, go ahead and click it. Click post. You can see there's the post that we created in InDesign, Photoshop, and then shared on LinkedIn. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create custom animated GIFs for social media using InDesign and Photoshop as a power combo. Hit the like button and leave a comment if you found this design lesson helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest tutorial content published every other week. Until then, take care and keep creating.